Hey there, Virgo, and thank you for joining me for your April 2021 reading. We're going to get into Tarot and Oracle for you, tapping in with your guides and guardians to get the information that you need to know for the month of April 2021. We're going to dive right in here with, whoop, <laughs> dive right in here with Wow, this card really wants... I have not been getting two Moonology cards, but these two cards really want to come out. So we're going for it. First card. You and your loved ones are safe. Second card. It's time to take action. Okay, let's see what we get with your both new moon cards. One in Cancer, one in Aries. You and your loved ones are safe. It's time to take action. Okay, let's see what we get there or what we get here with, um, with Tarot coming in to back this up. We're going to be using the Lightseer's Tarot. Dear Virgo, it's time to take action. Huh, I'm kind of feeling that this is like you not doing something because of people in your life. I just made out with my cat and I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I, have, I have cat hair all over my lipstick. Yeah, so I'm feeling with this like there's something here about you holding back from from something because there's concern about the people in your life um so there's this sense of oh i'm hearing duty sense of duty um needing to change needing to change some i'm hearing needing to change some things been thinking about changing some things been stagnant been kind of been in a state of what do i do about this situation and also thinking about what are people gonna think how is this gonna how is this gonna go over Okay, I'm just being guided to really shuffle these tarot cards. One more time here. See what we get. There's been some, like, you're being guided in a certain direction, but you're been, you've been pretty stubborn about it. Because... Ch change oh this should be good <laughs> got four cards here and the ladies first four out before we get distracted with those let's since those are all came out upside down or yeah face down the two cards that just came out uh the uh death and rebirth and the tower right next to each other so yeah Definitely. Let's see what our first card here is. The Page of Wands. Next, the Seven of Wands. Next, the King of Cups. Huh. And Justice in reverse. And I'm keeping it in reverse, I'm hearing. The Page of Wands and the King of Cups both came out in reverse. So let me just tap in here and see if they, yeah, both of them are in reverse. Just making sure there. So we have Page of Wands in reverse, uh, Virgo, Seven of Wands straight up, King of Cups in reverse, Justice in reverse whoa the death and rebirth card in uh straight up and the tower card straight up so we have three 
major arcana cards here at the bottom justice death and rebirth and the tower then we have page of wands seven of wands and king of cups really intense cards here the only regular suited card or non-suited card or i should say is the seven of of wands because we have the page of wands we have the king of cups both of them in reverse double checked on that um so we have like a night and day thing or a day and night thing i should i should say what i'm seeing here so our day and our night um and what i mean by that is kind of like this card right side up you see she has her wand she's tossing it there's energy going around here things are in a flow but we're in reverse here with this uh page of wands which is telling me there's like this undercurrent of energy and magic and being pulled in a certain way um, but it's mostly happening in your astral, like your, your, what could and sh really should, I don't, I'm not big on shoulds, but in a perfect world, you would be meditating and connecting to your guides and guardians, to yourself, to your soul, to, to the higher dimensions and realms in a conscious way through meditation in a real conscious way. Um, again, we have the King of Cups here in another meditative state. He is in reverse too. Again, showing me it's like these reversed connected energies instead of it being um, right side up and consciously connecting. Again, justice in reverse. So we have, this is how, goodness, this is justice right, sorry. This is justice right side up, but we are in reverse for you, Virgo, with this justice card. So there's things that need to be brought up to the surface still. There's still things that are in denial about you and your situation. We are nevertheless coming into a situation here, a time period with timelines that is a death and rebirth. That is, it's like things are, are no longer going to be able to be denied because what? It's time to take action um, and not and stop worrying about the consequences that and how other people are going to feel because it is a tower moment. Things are changing. There, it is a deconstruction and a reconstruction thing happening. Um, I feel though that this has been something in the works for for a bit for for a few months now and. Um, check my door there it's okay kitties um this well more than a few months this has been in the works for a while you do have spirit guides that are coming in nevertheless i'm being this is i'm being pointed to this king of cups this king of cups um kind of showing me like your guardian kind of coming in in as a guardian angel representation here um saying that it's it's a trickle it's a trickle coming in and you're allowing for the trickle it's like you're controlling the volume of what comes through for you and so far you've been mostly into just the trickle you're not you've you've been feeling like out of balance because it's like not to hearing not too long ago you're like okay this is set and this is set and i feel this and this and this is all like but yet once again there's something comes in to shake and rattle the cage and make it so the way you thought or hoped or whatever it would just be simple and normal and whatever it's just not that's not the case and you've been avoiding like 
it's like what you should want, what you should like, what you should be into. And it's just not working for you because it, that's an illusion. This is what's real. This push forward into yourself, into a reality that's more conducive for your actual vibration of who and what you are. And I feel like that is somebody that is um, on a conscious level connected to their spirit, to their guides, that you are an empath, a light worker, you are a natural healer, you are somebody who have had metaphysical, spiritual experiences throughout your lifetime and you know these things about yourself um but there's been definitely denial here and for a lot of this i think this is tied to other people your loved ones you and your loved ones are safe and and i feel like this is like will I be okay if I go in this direction? I thought I was going to go in this other direction, but will others be okay? Will I be disappointing them? Am I doing the right thing? Is like, you know, all of that sort of stuff is coming up here. But this is really beyond you. <laughs> this is something that is destiny your sole purpose, whatever it is, you're 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 meant to not have that normal life, the normal job, the normal situation. You're meant to be outside of the norm um, is what I'm seeing here. And it's just about releasing the your own expectations upon yourself, your own ideas about what you're what you're allowed to be or know or be connected to or any of that stuff let's get into sacred geometry um the sacred geometry oracle and see what we get here metatron's cube okay the all and the akashic record so really coming in for you to connect to higher wisdom your past lives to understand um card number 15 metatron's cube so let's i'm going to read directly from the book here the all and the Akashic records. Every cell within my body has now awakened to the sacred geometry that has laid dormant within me. I can ask, access the Akashic records of ancient civilizations. This pattern is one of the most important of the entire universe as it holds within it the map or blueprint of creation. Within this sacred geometry are all five platonic solids. It has been drawn today as you are ready to activate the sacred geometry that lies deep within your cells. It is time to delve deep into the sacred knowledge of the ancient civilizations and the Akashic records to create the energetic shifts that will allow you to enhance your life path and all who cross your path sacred geometry when we add 78 lines to the fruit of life we are bringing in the masculine energy as lines are male and spheres or circles are female it is a complex weaving of information systems by joining up and connecting each of the spheres with straight lines we end up with metatron's cube Within this pattern, we are bringing together duality, male and female, yin and yang, Metatron. Metatron is an archangel in charge of the world. Metatron has, or sorry, was one of two human prophets who was rewarded with ascension into the archangel realm as he was so devout to his faith. The other is Sandalphon. And practical application, Metatron holds the key to all sacred geometry and its underlying wisdoms, the Akashic records, and ultimately the all. You can call upon him as your teacher and use it as a gateway to learning more about hidden esoteric knowledge that lies within Metatron's cube through this 
Through its complex weaving of informational systems and pertinent lines, Metatron can also be called upon when you are in need of some healing and clearing. Remember, the cube holds all fl five platonic solids from which all five forms are created. Sorry, all life forms are created. They are the building blocks of life found within everything. Our awakening is imminent to survive the ever-changing shifts and vibrations of our planet. Our yearning to learn and know is expanding as the recognition deep within us starts to reignite. And card numerology is three, and crystal suggestion is any set of platonic solids, crystal merkaba, danberite, and morganite. Okay, so this is a really clear message that it's like, it's really time to, it's time to take action. It's funny, it's like, remember this card? It's time to take action. It's, it's really time to assume the role of who you are. Your authority as a spiritual um, or as a, a high level old soul, spiritual incarnate being in this lifetime. That's what I'm hearing very clearly. Um, so, and the Metatron's cube. <laughs> wow. Metatron and Metatron's cube is coming through to tell you he's a very. He's very serious about what he does and how he works and who he works with. And, and when he comes out, it's very important is the best way to put it. The best word I can think of, it's important for you to recognize, to acknowledge, to accept, to pay attention to this very seriously because you're being called upon. It's like, like in the classroom of souls, it's you. It's like we're talking to you and it's time for you to pick your head up and pay attention in class and and not be upset about being in class. Being part of this group is kind of what I'm hearing. Like like the whole part of your development and your evolution is this resistance is being this person who wanted to be normal, who wants to live a normal life, who doesn't want the woo woo, the psychic, the energy, who didn't ask for any of this, who's frustrated with, with um, being in this way. But that's, the case for many people who are of the woo and that have to reconcile what we think or what we thought or what we understood life to be and move out of that into a new and literally evolve from that to this. And it takes sometimes, you know, crawling through the muck of why am I here? This isn't fair. I didn't ask for this. This I'm the wrong person. This isn't for me. I'm not this woo woo person. That's crazy. This can't be real. Like all of these things that come into play with somebody who's very, very much um, needed to, you know, is here, you know, you're here for a purpose. You're here to connect in, from a human aspect to the spiritual to be a bridge to be to be the um a, a guide for others quite frankly and you're just you're just in a transition a transitional period from you know of of acceptance and um really considering other people and worrying about them worrying about how other people are going to to take your who you are it's like coming out kind of thing but you're still not sure exactly what that all means so what's very important to do is exactly what this card says which is connecting with archangel metatron or any of the archangels but he's coming through to say look if you connect with sacred geometry have it around you think about it draw it connect to it um, meditate on it um, it will help to unlock those the 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 chains, the locks to the chains that are keeping you s stuck, because there it is. It is going to happen that this this death and rebirth is on its way. It is definitely on its way. It is coming for you. It is in. And, and what's cool about that is that you're you know it. 
because you're psychic and you are this person. So you know it. You know it's coming. It's like, I know this tower moment's coming. I know this death and rebirth thing is coming. I, I can feel it in my bones. It's stuff that I'm connected to. You have a slew of evidence. I'm hearing. You have a slew of evidence already that is that has been stacking up for you but you come from that black or white very virgo it's this or it's that when what's needed is this nice in between area and that's a challenge for Vir virgo virgos are very black and white in their thinking very this is how i feel this is what i like this is what i don't like well that was quick um <laughs> And this is what's comfortable. This is what's uncomfortable. And being in that in-between is typically uncomfortable for a Virgo because they like this or that. It's on or off, black or white, yes or no. In the spirit, in the spiritual realm, and from the soul perspective, they're black and white, uh, <clears throat> the absolutes of black and white are fuzzy. And there's a lot of in between there. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait to see what this is. Okay. <laughs> so we got we got this shaman. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just so on point. It's pretty funny. Hey shaman, you're a shaman, and you need to get on board with that. And we're gonna we're first gonna get into the shaman card. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. It's just it's just very very specific here with what's going on, and I'm finding it um, humorous. <laughs> humorous. Okay, the shaman, the magi, the sorcerer, the medicine woman. Three archetypal ingredients constitute the shaman and all must be present in order to reveal its magic. First, the shaman is activated by long-standing diligent study, the mentor, in parentheses. Second, its orientation is generosity, um, sorry, generously and accurately aimed towards the healing of the self, the other, and the culture which is the healer. And the third, the shaman has a knack for finding doorways to the under, to the other world, allowing psychic visions and old magic to leak into this world, the unseen. In this way, the shaman is a master who bridges the everyday and the sacred, revealing potent power needed desperately in our time yet where there is power there is shadow so the shaman must be vigilant in studying their darkness this card reminds us that the force of healing is ultimately not our own we must shape it and share it with the world oh man okay when light fearless student and practitioner when dark over promises blames hurts self and others the shaman can't be rushed. Working with this archetype requires study and perseverance. Think of it like uh, bringing, oh, brining or marinating. The, con the content must permeate every fiber of the being. And contrary to popular belief, the shaman, shaman archetype appears in every vocation. Teachers, directors, surgeons, politicians, and poets are just a few of the faces a shaman can wear. Okay. And because I identify as a shaman myself, I can really feel into this energy with the shaman. And typically shamans have to go through this period of resistance, this period of unwellness within themselves, this period of sickness that they need to uh, overcome and heal within themselves and understand the dark depths of being unwell, of the shadow, of pain, of of darkness and, and loneliness and um, defeat and feeling stuck and feeling in between worlds because that's really that really is what it's talking about here on a level here is like having this archetype and this needing this 
this being a, a thing it means that there's a lot of layers to get through um, but that it really is anybody that identifies as a shaman whether you um, however that may may play out for you I come from a an, an, a line of medicine people, shamans directly from Colombia. I'm Colombian. Um, I am a natural healer. I'm a psychic. I I cross into worlds and and go into the shadowy places and work with spirit and Mother Nature and all of that. Um, but to do that, I had to, you know, for other people, I had to go there for myself on my own and dig through all of that to be able to come out of the other side. And it, and it is I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie <laughs> about this. It's not an easy road. It, there is a lot to clear up to clean up to get through to understand it does say this is not something that just magically just one day it's a process me just identifying myself as a shaman is something that's that for myself and for people who have met me they've called me that I thought about that for myself but I rejected that title up until very recently because of the stigma of what that meant and i didn't want you know there's and somebody did say something to me once like oh you should definitely not use that title because it's connected to to native americans and aborigines and this and that and people get very um territorial about it and all this stuff and i really let that sink in and, and i was like okay but that's what i really f that's what f is a perfect word for me shaman mystic those are the two words that I rejected for a really long time. And it was actually this deck of cards from another reader that those two cards were pulled, Shaman and Mystic. And immediately I knew it is time for me to stop rejecting these titles because that's who I am. I, I, I've been calling myself all sorts of things, medical medium, psychic, physical empath, psychic channeler, all these other woo woo words, but I rejected very specifically shaman and mystic because of the stigma or the, um, the confusion that other people have about what those terms and identifiers me meant and mean. And, um, that's not my problem. <laughs> my guidance recently was we really need to to allow for all the magic that's supposed to come in and through through me and to help other people I can't be putting walls up about things because of what may make other people comfortable or uncomfortable. So I really identify here with this. I get it. Um, but it is important to understand the, the theme of your life and all the inner weavings that brought you to this moment is connected to this it may seem separate but if you really stop to think about it you can pinpoint a lot of very spe specific things for yourself and in your life that will definitely show patterns in this way that you are a natural healer that you are um, connected you are a very spiritual person you're very connected to mother earth she speaks to you and through you you're very connected to animals they speak to you you help them they help you um all this kind of stuff that you're you're you feel when other people feel you want to help them you feel spirit talking through you all this stuff and these things are just going to get more intense your reason for being needs direction and it's and so the shaman comes up to say it's it takes work and dedication and understanding and ex and acceptance first of all to get that that going 
Okay, secondly, we're going to get into the stone as your tool. So I'm really, I've not, this is a very new deck for me. So I, I don't know this stone card, but I'm real. I've been really interested in it. So I'm super stoked that it's, um, that it's come up here because, and especially with this shot, with the shaman, um, and I'm really excited about them. By the way, this whole like nose, sinus, sneezing thing, very much third eye as I'm getting in and picking up. My third eye is just pulsating with this and what I'm picking up here for you, Virgo. So it's just um, activating. Okay. The eternal, the anchor, the rock. As an archetypal object, the stone holds psychic and literal weight. Its energy is one of permanence. Con concreteness and reliability the stone's ability to transform is nearly imperceptible to us as it changes ever so slowly over countless human lifespans a single stone may see thousands of generations come and go therefore it contains an ancient and eternal presence the stone is best used to anchor our wild side so no matter how far we roam we can always find our way back the stone tethers us to earth helping to ground and connect us to stillness quiet and peace when this card appears it is likely the stone is a remedy for what ails us humble and easily unnoticed the power of this stone balances the frenzy of our world oh i love it um when light steadfast loyal committed present when dark weighed down holding back and cold build oh gosh build a Build a connection to nature. Find inspiration in and whoa in oh Andy Goldworthy stone egg forms. I'm not sure what that is. It's just she has this red type. It's really hard to read. In Jewish mourning tradition, stones are left at graves rather than flowers. Sit with this vision for a moment and see what unfolds. Yes, they are. When my grandfather died, we went to his his to the cemetery and to his gravesite and we all left left stones and i thought that was really freaking cool <clears throat> because they would be there forever so anyway um uh, so with the stone here i'm picking up on a couple of things it's kind of tapping into your infinite soul kind of nature and letting you know it's the eternal it's um the the eternal the anchor the infinite in you and also that your resistance to change is coming through too so it's saying this is what you are and it's also saying this is what you are um even though the shaman is saying what you are um the stone is I love it. Stone holds psychic and literal weight. Um, and aside from that, it's just that the way that the stone will help you connect to. And when I hear it, when I see stone, I to me this is stone, cr crystal, cr uh, having crystals. Um, this is a new. I just this was just given to me today. A new shivalingam. Um, crystal, I highly suggest if you don't have sh Shiva Lingam in your world yet, please acquire it. It's so amazing. Um, it's very, very amazing energy of the Shiva Lingam. Very grounding, very all like from head to toe, all your chakras, you connect with the Shiva Lingam, you'll start to tingle, your whole body will feel really warm, you'll have this nice gentle weight come over you <laughs> anyway um so just thinking about the stone thinking about something like this and the way and the reason why it's shaped and all shivalingam is shaped like this is because of where it comes from it's tumbled in in um a river and i believe that's in india <coughs> don't quote me on that i believe it's in in it's in india but anyway 
with this stone here, um, I'm hearing with this energy, with this reading, with what we've already talked about and discussed, the stone is kind of saying like, this is the situation. It's, it's not changing. You're the one that needs to change. You're the one who needs to see this situation for what it is and, and marinate in it. So let it unfold and develop and you don't have to make any like now i'm this i was this now i'm this now it doesn't have to be so cut and dry virgo with black and white the way things are it can be a progression you can start little by little through intention meditation getting into things that you, places and ways that you're being pulled in that you have put walls up and rejected because it's meant a whole new world and you're like yeah I don't want a whole new world I, I don't necessarily like this one but I don't want a whole new world and I have a certain identity and persona and who I am and and what I am but that was built on a certain set of circumstances in the first half of your life or the first section of your life however old you are now now we're getting now the it's literally balance is coming into play but this balance needs to start from the di from the the bottom up and energetically spiritually everything it's like everything needs to be healed from the bottom up is what i'm seeing here come into balance there's there's things there's ideas about your world about the people in your world about your your ideas about yourself and about connections that are out of balance that is also i feel that is connected to uh, previous lifetimes so this is also why metatron's cube is coming in with the akashic records because there's there's karmic hooks and there are situations with past lives that are that's really influencing this life for you and you just don't know what that is so it's really hard to clean up what you can't see see the akashic records and tapping into past lives really really helps this trust me been there done it and i know for a fact this is a, this is true in the case it just takes your time effort and dedication to make it happen but this is something that really needs to happen okay lastly we're going to get into the hidden worlds oracle i'm really interested to see what comes out here for you virgo um to help you on your way and this is a really great reading just so you know it's it's a lot it's intense but um, it's positive. It's just, it's a lot of truth here of stuff that you need to come to terms with and deal with because it's coming for you. This tower moment, this death and rebirth. And remember, those cards flew out together. Flew. And we get the shaman and we get the stone. We get Metatron's cube. We get two moonology cards. Um time to take action and you and your loved ones are safe so no more procrastinating or waiting or making excuses that you know you're heading into this scary unknown or that you know what are people gonna say or think or feel or you're letting people down or there's guilt or pressure or any of that stuff is something you need to overcome it's your destiny okay here we go <laughs> You know, when messages are, are, are in a certain theme, they're just are in a certain theme. So here we are with our third depiction of meditation in your reading, Virgo. <coughs> Literally, the meditation. Peace, relief, and sanctuary. Let's not forget, we have the King of Cups in meditation and the Seven of Wands in meditation. So you need to... Stop avoiding meditation. You need to get into meditation, into guided meditations, into meditating on your no own, going into nature to meditate, connecting on that level. It's really, really necessary. It is at the heart of everything that's going to be helpful for you moving forward, even on 
the stones and crystals that you need to acquire in your life is going to come to you through meditation. So it's really important. Um, the Metatron's Cube card talked about meditation and connecting with, with uh, Metatron in meditation. And yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, card number 26. Let's get into it to round this up. Lovely, dear, beautiful Virgo. Ah, this being is in meditation out in the wild beyond, yet deep within her own being. She holds a burning bundle of herbs. It's smoke cleaning and clearing the human worlds all the way from her interdimensional home. She is is all the gifts of the natural world the flowers and the herbs and she is offering you <coughs> she is offering you their secrets and gifts this day in this stillness amidst this beauty she is holding the space for you to enter when you are ready so you too can break away from the dominant reality which is a lie and enter into the truthful song of the spirit once again take a moment this day to feel your way into a piece of time that you can claim for your own remove yourself for several long precious moments from the clamor and din of ego and of competition and of rush and hurry and sink into the earthly realness of the land in this moment, open up the eyes that lie within you. Find your way along the pathways of spirit and safely travel there, surrounded as you are by this cleansing, clearing smoke from the sacred bundle of magical herbs. Find your way to the pace where you can find the expanding nature of your soul, its infinite light and possibilities, and spend a little while there reminding yourself of who you truly are. Ah, yes, yes, yes. In this way, you will knit yourself together again. The pain of expectations, of pressure, of the physical dimension will ease for a time and you will return refreshed and whole with love guiding you. In this way, you will stay close to your own inner truth and the pain of dissonance will slowly decrease until it is no more. Ah, oh, perfect. Perfection. <coughs> and illumination meditation is no luxury it is my soul soul's food and drink meditation is no luxury it is my soul's food and drink and i will no longer allow my soul to go thirsty to hunger for the true source that nourishes us all here here so it's pretty clear what needs to happen here <coughs> for you to get into alignment with your um with really your your soul and where your soul is calling you and the, really the only way to hear that is to connect with your guides and guardians connect with your soul and connect with um, mother nature who is ready to receive you letting you know this right now she's ready to receive she's ready to connect when you are she is she's ready to Pull you in the direction of clearing energy, of healing, of the little treasures of. Oh, oh my God. What? Um, the little treasures of awareness, of knowing, of wisdom, of ancient wisdom, of sacred wisdom that is locked literally in your DNA, in your soul, in your soul code, in your in your in the quantum field field of who you are in your very very cells these things it's like um you know those glow sticks and they're just nothing until you crack them and they light up so think of your cells in your body like that they're just normal doing their thing but once you intentionally decide to push them into a new direction of releasement of energy they crack open and light can come in and transform and help transform you on a molecular energetic level 
biologically you change on a on a physical level energetic level so this is what is needed because i feel and what's coming to me here is that there's just there's blocks of this is this is you but remember it came out in reverse so you have all this energy all this passion all this creativity all this light this insane light that you're that is connected to you that is ready and waiting for you but it came out in reverse and what this is saying is that it's blocked but it's there it just needs to come through the i mean these two cards are the shaman and the seven i'm sorry this page of of wands are are really they're sitting right next to each other and i can't help it but pay pay attention to that in proximity so okay well that's it i hope that this has motivated you this is a really great reading um it's just time to release the the past release yourself let yourself out of the cage let go of expectations come into a place of of serenity for yourself and this may take big changes but it can start small and just think Every day I'm going to connect with my guides and my guardians. This month is about connecting to your spirit tribe, but especially your guardian angel. So please check out my energy update that I did that goes into that. Um, and <clears throat> lastly, I would say the meditations that I have um, for releasing fear um, shame, guilt, um, just that will clear a lot. Cord cutting and connecting with your guides and guardians with um, through that meditation that I have. Body love and um, meet your guardian angel would be fantastic for you. But really start in whatever way that is going to work for you or continue in whatever way is going to work for you but have it so my intention is to connect to my soul to, to connect to my guides so i may live authentically and just keep it simple from that perspective and of course if you um, are interested in getting some one-on-one -on -one help with coaching and ascension and spirituality and clearing and healing and energy, I do all of that. You can check out my website at thehealingbutterfly.org. There's podcasts and meditations and eBooks. I highly suggest you check out. Uh, of course, here on my um, YouTube channel, there's more resources about stuff. Please also check out the um, video that I recently posted about uh, star gates every single month we have stargates and of course that's coming up here in just a couple days on the fourth so please check that out too um, but in any event I want to uh, welcome you to the light family and whatever stage that you are in and know that um, we're all just ready to receive you on that energetic level and of course like I said I'm here to help if you would like that too um, please reach out but with that said, have a beautiful April 2021 Virgo. Sending love always. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye for now.